I really like building dashboards, but I have to admit that the world practically runs on Microsoft Office and your stakeholders might actually prefer a PowerPoint slide deck instead. So that's why they will constantly ask you stuff like, can we export the data? And then you'll have to be like, fine, I guess I can export all of the charts and tables and stick that into a slide deck. But the good news is that you don't manually have to do all of that stuff. If you already have the code to generate the charts and tables, then you can take this stuff and stick it into functions from the officer package. That way you can automate the process of generating the slides and the best part is you can just rerun the script when your colleague comes back asking for more data slides. Give me more slides! So today I'm going to show you how to use the officer package to generate PowerPoint slides from within R. Let's dive in. All right, in my quarto file, I've already put in a code chunk that loads the two packages that we're going to need in this video. First, we're going to load the tidyverse, and then we're going to load the officer package, which is the main package that helps you to deal with all the things related to Microsoft Office from within R, hence the name Office R. Now, if we execute this, we'll see that, of course, we have the packages loaded, and with this officer package now loaded, we can read in PowerPoint files. For that, I have created a template file in my working directory that has a couple of templates for us. So let's check out the slide deck first before we start working on any code. So let's open this. And the first thing you'll notice is that the slide deck is empty. This is by design because we need to add all of the slides programmatically. This does mean, of course, that you have to do everything from within R using code. You can also use the tools that PowerPoint gives you. And I suggest that you try to use it as much as possible because no one wants to code every single thing. In any case, to see what you can do, you have to go into the views pane and in there you go into the slide master. This will open the slide master where you can see the slide templates that I have. Here, this one doesn't have that many slides because I have put in only two just as an example for you to use. If you're using a company template, then chances are that you have way more than two slides. But I suggest that you throw out all of the templates that you don't need because this will make your life a little bit easier when dealing with the PowerPoint template in R. Now, as you can see here, this slide deck is pretty basic. It has a nice title slide where we have two placeholders for a title and for a subtitle. And of course, if you wanted to include more placeholders that you can modify, you can just use this insert placeholder command and then stick in whatever you want to create a placeholder for. So if we wanted to create a content, we could just drag and drop this stuff here. And then we'd have a new placeholder that we can easily fill from within R. Here, I don't want to do that, so I'll just get rid of this. The important thing to notice, whether this is on this slide or on the next slide, is that you properly name the placeholders that you use. And for that, you can press Alt F10, and this will show you the names of the placeholders that are associated with it. So here you can see I've already renamed everything to be meaningful. By default, PowerPoint will name these things text box one, line two, image three, and so on, which is kind of not meaningful. And you'll have a hard time figuring out what these things mean when you see these names when working with the code in R. So I suggest that you open this renaming tool and then you could rename everything by just throwing in some name that you want. Here, I don't need to change anything because I've already used good names, but if you work with a company template, then chances are that you will have to modify this. So that's really all the magic there is to it. There's nothing too fancy that you have to do when you work with PowerPoint here. Back in R, we can now load this template. For that, we're just going to minimize the files pane here, and then let's just use the read pptx function from the officer package. And in there, you'll just have to throw in the name of the PowerPoint file. In my case, that's slide template. If I execute this, you'll see that I immediately get an output that says we have a document with zero slides, but we have the following layouts available. By the way, these layouts here are also something that I have renamed. In PowerPoint, you can do this by right clicking on a layout and then just renaming this. Once again, it helps to have meaningful names instead of the generic names that PowerPoint generates by default. So to work with this PowerPoint file, let us now throw this into a variable. And now we can always get the content of our PowerPoint by just calling this variable that we're calling PowerPoint template. The first thing that we want to do is to take this variable and then throw this to the slide function. This function takes a layout and a master as an argument, and it just can be filled with one of the things that is specified here. In my case, this will just be the two templates. But once again, if your PowerPoint file 
has a much more templates, then you'll see more names here. So let's take this master name here. Let's throw this into this master argument. And then let's also fill the layout argument with the title slide that we have here. So if we throw this in there, you'll see that we now have one slide in there. Notice that I didn't actually resave the output of this command into the variable here. So I didn't take this and throw this in front of here to overwrite the variable. I didn't do that. But if we check this out, we still see that somehow this thing was saved. We now have one slide in here. So this is one important thing to keep in mind that this object here is modified whether you resave it or not. Next, let us check out what we have on our new slide. For that, we're just going to take our template and we're going to throw it into the slide summary function. In there, we have to specify the index of the slide we have. Right now, that's pretty easy because we have only one slide, so we set the index to one. So right now, you see here that this returns a data frame. We can make this look a little bit nicer by throwing this into as tibble, but this doesn't change the fact that the tibble looks empty. And that's probably not shocking to anyone because we haven't actually put any content into the placeholders. But we know that our layout had placeholders associated with it because we have just seen that in the PowerPoint file when I opened it. To find these placeholders, we can do a very similar thing. We just take our template and then we throw it to the layout properties function. And then if we execute this, we once again see that we get a data frame, which I don't like, so I will immediately make this into a tibble. And now we see in the name column that we have multiple layouts used here. So let's specify that we only want to look at the layout that we have specified here, namely the title slide. So if we do that, we see that nothing changed because I have thrown this into the as tibble function. Of course, this needs to go into the layout properties function. And now I only see those placeholders that are related to the title slide. Now in this table, we see a whole lot of information like the master name, the layout name, and then what type of placeholder this is, what ID the specific placeholder has, what the label is. And then we see some other stuff like some content labels or some coordinates of where the placeholder is located on the slide. For our purposes, we can just focus on the ID and the pH label. These are the things that we can use to fill the placeholders in our slide. Notice here that the labels here are the names that I have specified in my PowerPoint when I modify the names. You know, the one where I modified these selection things, these are the exact same names that we see here now. So here you can really see that you will find the names that you give in PowerPoint back in R as well. So now that we know what the placeholder names are, it's time to fill them with stuff. Let's create a new code chunk. And in there, we can throw in the PowerPoint template and then pass this to the ph with function. This is the main function that can fill PowerPoint placeholders. It takes two arguments that you need, namely value and location. The value thing can be anything here, just like a text or some table or some ggplot. All of these things work to be inserted into a PowerPoint slide, and we'll see a couple of examples of that. But for now, let's just get started with a simple text. Let's just use this first placeholder to fill the title text. So we're going to throw in a title like creating slide decks with R. And then for the location, we need to specify that we want to use the title text label. Unfortunately, we cannot just throw in this into the location as it will not work, but instead we have to use the ph location function. There are a couple of them, and here we need the one that is related to the label, which takes as an argument the ph label, which is the exact same thing that the layout properties call gave us, which we can still see here. So using the location label, we can stick in the title text label, and then we close the parentheses just to, well, close it. Now, if we execute this, we'll see that we get an invalid ID because the officer package seems to have an issue with what slide we're currently on and what we want to modify. And the way to fix that is to just use the on slide function and say that we want to go to the first slide. And then if we pass this to the ph with function and re-execute everything, you'll see that everything worked out nicely. Now, by the same logic, let us also take this code here and let us fill this subtitle tag. For that, we can just use something simple as a subtitle, something like a short demo. And now if we re-execute this, we once again see that everything worked out. But now the question becomes, how do we actually get this into a file? 
Thankfully, that's really easy with the Officer package. All you have to do is to take your PowerPoint template and throw this into the print function where you can just specify something like slide output.pptx. And then if you run this, you'll see that everything seemed to work fine. And if we look into our directory, we see here that we have another slide deck. So let's open that up. So here we can see that, yeah, we have our title slide and it is also filled with the title and a subtitle. Now watch what happens if I take this title here and then move this a bit. It seems like this title is in here multiple times. And if you paid attention, you might have realized what causes this issue already. You see, I first showed you how to create this code here to add the title using this phwith function. And then we executed this thing and I've shown you, okay, cool, this worked, we didn't get an error, let's add the subtitle as well. And I've thrown this part on top here and then re-executed everything, which means that in total we have executed this part here twice. And remember how we never have to save this variable into itself to make the changes stick. This is the exact mechanism that causes that if we execute this part twice, we'll also have the title in there twice. The way to fix that is to simply reload the PowerPoint template from scratch. So to re-save this from scratch. And then if we execute this part here, we see that right now this doesn't execute because this thing here is still opened. So let's not save this. And now if we re-execute this and look into the file and then look into the title, we see that, okay, there is no exact same title under the actual title at this time. So this is something you have to be a little bit careful about or you have to watch out. But once you understand this pattern, you can usually figure out what's going on when you have multiple things in your slides. So with that, we have already understood fundamentally how working with PowerPoint and creating slides work. Let's do a few more examples using other layouts and different content that we insert into the slides. Let's close this here for now. And then let's create a new code chunk to throw in more stuff. For that, we can replicate what we have done here. We first add a new slide. And this time we use a title and content layout. Let's throw this in here and executing this will immediately give us a second slide. Now what we can do next is check out what labels we have in that particular layout. So let's take the code from before and then use the new layout name to check out what labels we have available. And here, if I make a little bit more room, we see that we have a placeholder for the content, one for the date, one for a footnote, one for the slide number, and one for the title of the slide. So let's start easy by filling these four placeholders using the exact same strategy as before, because these will be filled with text just like before. So there's not much new we have to learn here. So we take the template and then we throw it to the ph with function but of course we also have to remember that we need to go to the second slide so let's copy the on slide part as well let's go to slide two and then we fill the title and we throw in some fancy title like add data driven content like tables and then we repeat the exact same thing a couple of times for the other placeholders so we'll go with the slide number which is just the first slide we'll go with the footnote which will just be the title of the slide deck, namely creating slides with R. And then we can also specify the date, which we can fill using a nice format where we use the now function from Lubridate, which will give us the current timestamp. And then with the format function, we can bring this into a nice template. But of course, I have to make sure that I use the actually correct command. So now with the L here selected as well, we see that this just gives us the current date. So now just to make sure that everything worked out, let's just take this command in here and throw this over here just to see if when we execute everything, then everything works out just like we expect. So let's re-execute all of the code chunks from before and then this code chunk. And then if I look at the output, we see that, okay, this looks good. We have this data-driven content title here. We have the footnote, we have the date, and we have the slide number. So that worked pretty well. Let's insert a table into the middle of the slide. For that, we can just have a look at this content placeholder. So we, all we have to do is to throw in another set of ph with commands, and then we throw in this title here. Let's make some room. And then we have to fill this 
with some table. The best way to add a table to a PowerPoint slide is using the Flex table package because it has a really good support for all of the things related to Word or PowerPoint. So let me just throw in a code that creates a table using the Flex table package. So let's make some room here and then throw in the code chunk as an intermediate step. And then I'll just throw in the code chunk that is based on the Flex table package, which will use the Parma Penguins data set as data. And then if we execute this, you can see that this is how the table looks. I didn't go over any details of how this table is created because I feel like this isn't the point of this specific video here. But if you're interested in learning more about Flex table, I do have a course specifically on that and you can check it out via the link that should pop up right about now. But as for this video, really the only thing we need is the output variable here. And this is the thing that we can stick into the value of the ph with function. And now if we re-execute everything and then also re-execute this last code chunk, then we'll see that nice, our table is right in there. And the cool thing is that this is also modifiable, just like everything else that we have inserted. And you also have all of the style specification from flex table. So this means that you can use all of the fancy tricks that flex table gives you, and it will show up the exact same way in your PowerPoint slide, which is a pretty cool feature. And it isn't obvious that this should work because PowerPoint is kind of a hard format to work with at least if you want to do it programmatically. So it's kind of cool that the flex table package supports all of that. All right, cool. So now that we can add a table, let me also show you how to add a ggplot. So here we'll create a new code chunk and then I'll just throw in a code that generates a basic ggplot. So here, let me just throw in this code here if we execute it and then take a look at the variable, we'll see that the plot looks like this. It's nothing too fancy. It's once again, just an example to show you how to insert this into a PowerPoint deck. Thankfully, the workflow works the exact same way. We just have to take this part here and then let's just throw this into the same code chunk. And then we add the same slide like before. We don't need to check out the layout names. So let's throw this out and then we move to the third slide and then we can modify all of the things that we have inserted before. So here we can just go with dot 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 or gg plots. The slide number will be two. The title of the footnote will remain the same, same as the date. And then as for the content of the content placeholder, we're just going to use the ggplt variable. And now if we re-execute this code chunk, we'll see that now we have three slides. And if we take a look at this, we can't actually because this printing didn't work because I still had slide output open. So let's close this and now re-executing this will have four slides. So this isn't what we want. So we have to make sure that we do everything from scratch. So now we're back where we started and this time things should have been saved. And yeah, we can now see our deck. This is our title. This is the slide we've had before. And then we can see that we've also added the third slide that contains the ggplot we have created. As you can see here, this is just an image of the plot, but there's also a way to make this into an SVG instead of a static image, which can have some advantages every now and then. But for now, let's just leave it like that. Nice. With that, we've successfully learned how to create a slide deck from scratch using R. All we had to do was to just create a couple of templates using the slide master, making sure that we name all of the placeholders appropriately. And then we can fill all of the placeholders using R and the officer package. And then our result is a slide deck using the data that we need for this particular slide deck. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I'm certain that you're also going to enjoy my data cleaning masterclass, which helps you to reduce the time that it takes you to clean up messy data so that you can get to your data insights much faster. So if you're interested in that, you can follow the link that should pop up right about now. Or if you're interested in checking out some of my other videos, I've got a playlist for you right here. And with that, all that's left to say is thank you for watching and I will see you next time.